friends. It is peach canning day. Um, my mom's coming over and she's going to help us can a whole bunch of peaches, local peaches from the farm down the road, um, which are delicious. Last year, all I did, I just, I didn't know the difference between the peaches. So I canned both the freestone and the ones that stick to the pit. <laughs> and for canning, if you're gonna be canning just peach slices, it's going to be, it's a lot easier to use the freestone ones because they come right off the pit. We had such a time <laughs> last year trying to um, get the peaches off of the pit of the first type of uh, peaches that come out. But right now I'm washing all of my jars and putting them in the dishwasher right now. That way everything's clean and it's all heated up for when we do the water bath canning. We're gonna take you through the whole process today. So thanks for joining along. citric acid in it I believe again follow recipes but um, you can help you can do something to help it from browning uh, but yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> we don't really care it still tastes good <laughs> up to you though if you like if you'd rather have it without browning that's up to you um, we pack our peaches in a light uh, in an apple juice, this giant bottle of apple juice you can see. Um, and I kind of squish them down when I'm packing them because they usually have a lot of space left. Uh, so I just kind of push them down a little bit. Also, if you're looking at this and you're just your canner and you're like, oh God, don't worry, we're okay. <laughs> 
just like to tap these to try to get them to settle a little bit more. Then I'm going to come in here with some hot apple juice. I'm going to pour it on top. It's going to get kind of stuck at the top because it needs to be banged down a little bit. But this little device also helps um, helps remove your air bubbles so that you can kind of get down in here. You can see the air bubbles in there. take your time you want to remove as many as you can and it's okay as long as they seal this is a little measurement tool I need it a half inch head space so I'm going to just fill the liquid line up to that point so it's right at the edge of your jar and you can see I've filled it up a little bit too much in that one. So we're going to take a little bit out. See, I just want it touching the edge there. And give it another little one of these. We'll wipe the edge so that it makes a solid seal. Our top goes on. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. place these in here and they're going to sit in here for a minute until we get the rest of the jars packed. seven jars of peaches already done and then we've got six jars in here excluding the one that just broke in the bottom of the water bath and what is important here is that everything stays upright so um or it's it's helpful i have had moments where things didn't stay upright before and they still sealed so it's okay um you can see some of the peach juice or peaches from the other one coming up. 
So I try to kind of move things around carefully. This is like kind of an awkward thing, but you get used to it. I just try to make sure that I keep it upright and I kind of think of myself as like a little robot machine <laughs> to try to make sure that everything stays up. Um, if you have a little bit of water on the top of the jar, that's great and can help your seal as well. I am by no means an expert panner, but I've been doing it for a few years and gotten a ton of tips from my aunt, who's a master canner. Shout out to Sue Peterson. <laughs> so that doesn't mean I'm a master canner. <laughs> Do the best that I can. Um, I'm going to take these other two out, but I like to put them on a cutting board um, and before I put them onto the countertop, just for a little extra heat protection. And it looks like I got some air bubbles in the peaches. Um, I was a little worried about it at first, but um, as long as the top seals, um, not not the rim but the top underneath as long as you get a firm seal then it's okay otherwise you stick it in your fridge and you make sure that you eat it um, before it goes bad one of the things that we're trying to do whenever we make something or can something is try to reduce as much waste as possible so we are taking the peach peels that we just peeled off to make our um, our canned peaches over there, which we'll eat this winter. And we're just laying them out. Thanks for your- My Vanna White. <laughs> your Vanna Whiting. <laughs> um, we're laying them out onto our dehydrator racks. We're going to dry the peach peels and use those to make peach sugar. So when they're really crispy and dry, we'll grind them down um, in a food processor and then mix them with sugar. The other thing we're doing with the peach pits, there's a lot of, there's usually a lot of like juice and, and stuff back on there too. So we did take some of the peach pits and the peels and put them in some water and the extra juice I'm going to strain that tomorrow because um, it needs to sit overnight and then make a little peach pit jelly um, or peach peel peach pit jelly. <laughs> Out of that, I think then we can take the peach pits and dry them in the oven. And I saw that people make iced tea out of the dried peach pits, which I thought was really cool. So we'll try to use it that way too. Thanks so much for canning with us today. Make sure you subscribe so that you can check out next week's video, which is part two. And we're going to be showing you what we do with the peach waste and teach you how to make peach sugar. I hope you're well and wishing you lots of big love.